Hi everybody and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the mighty John Entwistle, bass player of The Who. I guess I'd like to be remembered as uh, someone who helped change the face of bass guitar. Is John Entwistle the greatest rock bassist of all time? He's the best bass player in rock and roll ever, no contest. He was certainly the first to approach the bass in a certain way. Before The Who, rock bass players looked like this. John was and still is remembered as the man who changed bass guitar. Prior to John, bass guitar was merely a support instrument. He played quarter and eight notes with the only purpose of supporting the guitar player, and bassist didn't have much influence on the musical outcome of the band. And Twistle changed the game, introducing the mindset of a lead guitar player to an instrument that never had nothing more than a secondary role. Born during the final year of World War II, it became part of the Entwistle family legend that just as the baby John was born, a payload dropped by a German bomber landed down the road from the hospital, and that John was found to have a birthmark shaped like a bomb on his skull. Through the type, John first pushed the boundaries of loudness, using 200 watts of power when most bands used 50, and this is one of the reasons for his nickname, Thunderfingers. And Twister's bass lines were audible and stood out even amongst highly animated bandmates Roger Daltrey, Pete Townsend and Keith Moon. And Twistle also developed what he called a typewriter approach to playing the bass. It involved positioning his right hand right over the neck, so all four fingers could be used to tap percussively on the strings, causing them to strike the fretboard with a distinctive twangy sound, completely unheard of at the time. And if you think about it, nobody else has used this technique since. John also showed an interesting blending of an extremely aggressively playing style while standing very calmly like a rock. This comes down to an incredible economy of motion, allowing him to play with complete command and earning him his other nickname, the Ox. The most emblematic case is probably the Who's appearance on the Smoothers Brothers Comedy Hour, where Keith Moon bribed a stagehand to load gunpowder into one of his bass drums but the stagehand used about 10 times the standard amount of gunpowder. When Moon kicked the drum off the riser and set off the charge, the intensity of the explosion burned Townsend's hair and embedded a piece of symbol in Moon's arm. Death and destruction all around, but John, just look at him. He's hardly bothered. So let's have a look at some of the defining traits of this formidable player. Number one, the context. To describe properly John and Twistle's style, we need first to have a look at the environment in which he operates, in particular the rhythm section of The Who has a savage quality that would make it unthinkable for any modern band. Quoting Loudersound.com Moon's drumming was propulsive but manic, his timekeeping at best erratic and sometimes non-existent. Yet and Twistle was solid enough to keep him in check, and so good that he was also able to play around and about him meaning that even the simplest Who songs were elastic and hard to pin down. According to many, and Twisted provided the true rhythmic timekeeping in the band and acted as a drummer, while Keith Moore, with his flourishes around the kit, was more like a keyboard player. In 1989, John himself pointed out that by modern standards, the Who haven't got a proper bass player. If you listen to the end of my generation, you'll know what I mean. John not only kept time, since Moon didn't, but he also filled in for a rhythm guitarist as Pete Townsend slashed away. It's very rare to see a bar band performing a Who song. And I can also speak from direct experience, having played Won't Get Full Again live for years, completely wrong. I tried to give it another go in the making of this video, but it's just impossible to track down. The bass guitarist that uh, hasn't been copyable. Number two, the sound. Another key element to Entwistle style is the sound. Without getting too much into gear that has been already extensively analyzed, there's a couple of things you can do regardless of what bass guitar you're using. First of all, you have to put your amp really loud, or to quote Entwistle himself, louder than anyone else. Singer Roger Daltrey was always asking Entwistle to turn down the volume on stage, claiming he wasn't able to properly hear himself sing. Usually, and Twistle would stare implacably at Daltrey and then turn it up instead. Number two, turn up the top end. Yeah, I use a lot of top end, not a lot of trebles. On top of your amp settings, you also need to use a fresh set of stainless steel strings. John used 45105 Rotosound String 66, and unlike the vast majority of bassists, 
he had his strings changed before every concert in order to attain maximum crispness. And finally, keep your action very low. John's right hand technique includes a rapid mixture of plucking, picking and tapping. His typewriter technique used all four fingers to tap percussively on the strings. Often playing near the neck of the bass, his powerful finger in style delivered the driving signature tone that defined the sound of the who. Try thinking in hitting the string downwards, considering the fretboard is down instead of traditional plucking, and expect the sound to come from the strings hitting the frets rather than from your fingers making them vibrate. It's not plucking, it's not slapping, nor it is tapping, it's thunder fingers. Number 3. The left hand. And Twisters is also known for his left hand technique, which he used to create harmonics and percussive sounds. In addition, he used a number of effects to create overdriven, distorted guitar sounding bass lines that were often the melodic or lead parts of a song. Also, left hand articulations like hammer-ons, pull-offs, bends, slides, vibrato were all part of his repertoire. His playing in my generation is pretty remarkable to listen to even now. It was the first bass guitar solo in rock and roll history. My generation really opened up the horizons for the bass guitar. Number 4. Interaction with lead vocals. Pretty common in the music of The Who is a sort of call and response effect between Daltrey's vocals and Entwistle's bass playing. Again, John is acting like a lead instrument, providing rapid melodic lines that complete lead vocals musical phrases, while Townsend anchors the song with rhythmic chord work. Number 5. Super fast triplets. Another element that keeps popping up are machine gun fast triplets that really characterize John's bass line. You probably thought that during the intro of Baba O'Reilly the bass just hit the root together with the drums, right? Well, look again. The Who Studio recordings seldom did justice to end Twister's playing, and to fully appreciate all these little nuances, you really need to listen to the live versions. Number 6. Octave Chords Though power chords on bass are pretty common nowadays, they were a new thing in the 60s, also considering that N Twister was the first bass player to have a sound bright enough to make them distinguishable. He also used a special chord made of two octaves, plucking two strings at the same time, kinda like an acoustic guitar. Number 7. Super Fast Ascending Slides Another one of John's trademark moves is the occasional super fast ascending slide, throwing in the middle of the playing. And when I say fast, I mean laser beam fast. And Twister's complex combination of rhythm, fills and counter melodies created an enveloping wash of low frequency resonance. The electric bass was still a new instrument when John took it up in the early 60s, and its potential was still unknown. After The Who, it was never the same, and Twister opened up a whole new world, and monstrous players like Lemmy and Geddy Lee rightfully consider him the greatest rock bassist of all time. Thank you very much for watching, please subscribe to the channel, leave us a like and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Habits, today we're gonna to talk about the almighty Spanish Tocoso.